This is the director's cut of building an app in four minutes, uh, the long version. So we'll start with the parse template, which you can get from github.com slash coolasspuppy. And we will go ahead and supply a name for our application and supply the Facebook app ID, the Facebook uh, display name, as well as the parse app ID and the parse client key. This will generate all the code necessary for us to run our app. Now let's add the parse framework, which we can get from www.parse.com. And let's add the Facebook framework, which we can get from developers.facebook.com. We're also going to be using some login tools, and perhaps later on we, in this app we may choose to use uh, the place picker and the, and the uh, friend picker. So let's go ahead and add the resources from our Facebook SDK as well. So now we've got everything we need from our app, uh, from external to our app, uh, to run this application. So let's go to the plist file and modify the plist entries for Facebook to be the correct app ID and the correct display name. This is a bug in Xcode templates uh, that we just have to work around. And we just have to replace that underscore with the actual first digit of our app ID. Once we've got all that squared away, we can go ahead and run our application and test it out. Uh, remember, 99 times out of 100, if you have a problem with your Facebook app, it's you know start with that plist file and make sure everything's correct. Uh, we'll target iOS 6. Uh, let's uh, before we continue, actually, let's go ahead and uh, set the login permissions uh, for Facebook. Uh, in this app, we're going to want uh, both the email permissions as well as the page likes. Uh, and uh, you know there are a lot of best practices for using Facebook login, and we suggest that you take a look at those at developers.facebook.com slash login uh, and check those out. So let's run our application. We'll get the Facebook login button. We'll log in with Facebook, be presented with the brand new login screen, select OK. Uh, and then our application has one tab in it. And so now we want to flesh it out and add some more tabs. So our application uh, goes off, uh, lets a user take a picture of a fox that they may see here on Facebook campus uh, and post that picture. And then we can see a list of pictures of foxes that people have posted. That's the basic premise behind this silly little app. So let's go add a new view controller to view all the foxes that people have taken. Uh, we'll call it the fox uh, view controller. Uh, and this inherits from PF query table view controller, uh, which is a parse base class. Uh, and so uh, inside here, what we want to do is first start off by copying some stub code uh, that we've got elsewhere to uh, create the tab items and the tab names. Uh, it's kind of boring to watch me type, so I just go ahead and copy and paste that. And then now let's set the class name for this particular uh, uh, table view controller. Uh, the class name that we'll use to store all of our foxes is creatively called fox. Uh, so we'll go ahead and fill that in. And we'll go ahead and set some other additional parameters that uh, are related to parse as well. I uh, definitely encourage you to check out uh, parse and definitely check out some of these parameters and see what works for your app uh, and what, what doesn't work. Uh, in this case, this is some of the things that I've learned. Uh, definitely work for me. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and uh, scout through here. Uh, and as you watch me type, uh, I'll just tell you, uh, visit uh, facebook.com slash mpkfox uh, to see pictures of our beautiful foxes uh, and uh, see what everyone here on Facebook campus has been raving about. So now we've set up our uh, table view controller uh, to go and query the fox object inside of parse uh, and then display it. Uh, so let's go back to our app delegate uh, and let's first create the forward declaration for our view controller. Uh, let's go ahead and import that view controller into the app delegate implementation file. And I go ahead and uh, inside the uh, uh, construct logged in UI uh, private method, uh, what I do is I create all my view controllers here and then I'll sequentially add them to the tab bar controller. Uh, I've got an issue here in that that property isn't defined, uh, which is a silly mistake on my part. So we'll go back to the app delegate header file real quick, uh, declare the property. Uh, like I said, this is the director's cut, so you get to watch me make all my mistakes. So I will create the view controller, or define the property for the view controller. Then go back to the implementation file, uh, synthesize that property.
and let's run the app and check it out. Log in with Facebook. I've got a new tab, and I've got one fox that's already stored as an object. So you can see already I'm using the PF Query Table View Controller from Parse. I've set the class name on that Table View Controller. Uh, and what that does is it goes off to Parse, it queries uh, that particular class, uh, and pulls down all the objects, and then I just plop them into the Table View Controller. It's all automatic. You've seen absolutely nothing uh, different apart from what's actually in the code here. Now, one of the neat things about the ta PF Table uh, PF Query Table View Controller is that you can customize the query. So let's go ahead and add a method that lets us customize that query, and we implement that method here. Uh, and inside here, what we can do is we can define a PF Query. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go to PF, uh, query, I'm going to query parse for everything that's of the class name. Uh, in this case, again, it's uh, creatively named Fox. And then uh, I can uh, specify the cache policy. What this lets me do is uh, use uh, my app offline uh, and uh, be able to still see the content even if my app is online. There's some really cool caching things uh, that Parse enables you to do inside the PF Query Table View Controller that uh, you should definitely experiment with. So here I've defined my query, I've defined my cache policy, uh, and then I can also set my order uh, by property. And so in this case, I'm going to order by ascending on the name column. Uh, and then uh, return that query. And so now I've defined a query for this uh, table view controller. It's really, that's all there is to it. It's that simple. Uh, and what this will do is let me customize the results that I get back uh, from querying parse. So now what we need to do is we need to create a new view controller, uh, UI view controller in this case, uh, for um, uh, creating a new fox. So if I go around campus uh, and I see a fox, I want to be able to take a picture of that fox and I want to be able to post that fox uh, to uh, to my app. And so let's create a new view controller that lets me do that. And I'll stick it in the fox's new directory. As you can tell, I'm a little bit uh, a little bit particular about where I store my files. So I've got a blank design surface and interface builder. And what I'll do now is I'll drag and drop a few controls. So I'll start by dragging uh, a text field uh, onto the design surface, uh, size it appropriately, make it look reasonably attractive, uh, set some properties on it so that the placeholder text is name, and so we can name a fox uh, once we see it. Uh, I want to add a UI image view so that uh, I can see and preview the photos that I've been taking of my fox, uh, set it so that it's square and so that it's also centered. And now I'll add a couple of buttons uh, onto the design surface. The first button here is for adding a photo. Uh, and the second button here will be for saving the fox once I'm satisfied that I've got what I want. So now that we've got the design surface all squared away, let's uh, now go into our uh, header file and start creating uh, the links, the outlets and the actions between here. So first we'll create an outlet for the text field. And this is a problem in Xcode 5. I've actually got to add manually uh, my file. And so, you know, probably just a pre-release bug. Got that over with. Again, you know, this is the director's cut. So, okay. So now let's go ahead and create an outlet uh, for this file. That works. And we'll also create an outlet for the UI image view. And now let's create a couple actions, so, uh, or a few actions. The first action we'll do is for when the photo button is pressed. And once we've got that, the second action will be for when the save button is pressed. And then finally, uh, you know, we want to be able to dismiss the keyboard when it shows up, so we will make the uh, UI view actually a UI control so that we can uh, create an action on it, and specifically the touch down action. So this will let us uh, tap anywhere outside the keyboard to dismiss the keyboard, and we'll just call that background press, and we'll implement that in, in a moment as well. Uh, I've got a bunch of code that already handles uh, creating uh, the photograph and the camera and everything else. Uh, in order to use that, I need to implement a few delegates. So we'll go ahead and implement a few delegate patterns. 
and then we'll copy and paste uh, all the code for popping up an action sheet, for displaying the camera, for uh, analyzing what kind of devices are available, and so on. Uh, one of the problems we've got in running a simulator is that you've got no camera, so I've had to create some stuff in the camera roll uh, so that I can use that. Uh, and then, uh, so I've got all my camera stuff here uh, as well, so I've copied and pasted all of that. Let's now implement uh, the save button press. This is where it gets really fun with parse. Uh, so I'm going to create a uh, PF object class. Uh, that represents uh, my fox, uh, so it's going to be PF object and then object with class name. Uh, and so what I'm doing basically is I'm creating an object uh, that has the class name that's expected of me inside of uh, inside of Parse. Uh, don't forget to import Parse; it's always kind of important. All right, uh, now that we've got that, uh, we can uh, set properties on this particular object. The first one is. Uh, the name property, uh, you know, the fo every fox object inside of Parse that I've created uh, has a name column associated with it. So let's go grab the name from the appropriate text field uh, and supply and uh, say that that's part of the name column. Uh, images are kind of fun as well. So the first thing we'll do is we'll see if we do have an actual image to uh, upload to Parse. Uh, if we do, we'll get the NS data representation or the JPEG representation in NS data format of that image. Uh, and then we'll stick that NS data inside of a PF file. And then uh, we'll go ahead and save uh, that to parse uh, inside the image column. And that's it. And so now we'll just save this stuff in the background. Uh, and uh, we're kind of done. Uh, we'll dismiss the view controller uh, so that we go back uh, to the main tabs. Uh, let's go ahead real quick and implement the, back, uh, implement the method for when the background is pressed. Oh, well, first uh, what we'll do is we'll go back uh, to the view controller and we'll create a right button in the navigation controller uh, so that uh, it's obvious that, uh, so that we know when, when uh, we can pop or push the view controller for creating a new fox. Uh, and now we'll, get we'll implement the background press uh, method and we'll get that all squared away. Uh, import the right uh, view controller header files and then we'll run it. Log in with Facebook again. There's our existing fox. We'll create a new one. Uh, we'll create a new one with a picture of me. Again, this is from the library that's uh, on my simulator. And we'll save it. We get pulled to refresh for free. And you can see, there's my fox, all set. That's how you build an app in iOS and Parse.